As of today, if you see somebody on the internet say, if you want an audio upgrade, get an XLR mic. You can tell them, no thank you, bitch. We got the beacon mic in the house now. Back in 2020, Kick Tripod, who works on the Beacon team now, who is also largely responsible for the Go XLR, tweeted out something that was super interesting. It was a tweet about USB microphones, and it read, what is your perception of what an XLR microphone and interface does that a USB microphone does not? Who do you think benefits from these differences? Now me, a USB mic hater at the time, was so glad to share my perspective and my opinion about USB mics. Little did I know, this little nipple milker was working on a USB microphone that ticked all my my boxes. Fast forward a year and a half and we now have one of the dopest and one of my favorite microphones for content creators. Let's get the first thing out of the way. What's the price? The price is $279. So that may or may not be a small serving of sticker shock to you, but do me a favor, give this review a listen, make your judgment call afterward. Now that we are about to get into the specs and the features of the microphones, I need to disclose that Beacon did send this mic out to me for beta testing with the obvious assumption that I, a content creator, would most likely create content about it. They have no control over what is being said in the review. They do not get to see the video before it's posted. They did not issue a script with any talking points. They do not get to comment on it. They do not get to review the video before it goes live. However, I will be double checking my stats with Kick Tripod just to make sure that all of the things are accurate. Now, if that wasn't clear enough. This video's sponsored. Now, on a super quick sentimental note, Kick Tripod was the gentleman who reached out to me and got me involved with this project. Even though I've been streaming for eight years, I didn't really have a portfolio for being a tech content creator. So I just wanted to take a moment and shout him out. Give him a kiss because he's taking a chance on me. He's kind of taking me under his wing a little bit and I won't ever forget that. So Tripod, you the man. All right. Brass tax time, let's open some cardboard. Ooh. Go away, I'm under NDA. Go away! Bye -bye. Okay. There's, there's, oh, I thought there was no microphone. I thought, there, I thought it was supposed to be here and it wasn't. Oh my God, that would have been fucking hilarious. In the box, we have a USB Type-C cable, a three foot 3.5 millimeter extension cable, and a USB Type-C to Type-A adapter. Now I have been told that the cables that are in this box might be a little bit different than the ones that your ships with, so please keep that in mind. This is a USB 3 cable. However, Beacon has said that you can plug it into a USB 2 or 3 port and it will work. Lastly, we do have a pamphlet painted with the blood of sure SM7B users everywhere. And underneath all those goodies, you will find the beefy and beautiful filet mignon, the Beacon mic. Now with the mic out of the box, let's talk about hardware first because yeah, there's software. <gasps> I forgot to make my windows pretty. Perfection is a murderous son of a bitch. We're doing it live. The Beacon Mic is a USB Type-C broadcast dynamic microphone with a cardioid unidirectional polar pattern. It has a frequency response of 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a bit depth of 32 bit, yes, 32 bit float. It has a max sample rate of 96 kilohertz while also supporting 48 kilohertz and has an adjustable gain range from zero to 20 decibels. Okay, features. Let's get into the physical ones first and then the technical ones after. There's a 3.5 millimeter jack on the bottom of the mic that is your headphone amp. You can use this jack both as an audio playback device and for real-time monitoring of your voice. To get the full experience, you're gonna wanna use this mic as your default recording device and your listening device. Obviously, that means plugging your headphones directly into the mic and thankfully, Beacon X includes the color matched extension cable so that if you want to run that under your desk so that you can swap out headphones or headsets at any time, you can do that. One of my favorite parts about the mic, obviously RGB. I'm a huge RGB fan and they did a really, really great job of diffusing the lights. You cannot see the individual LEDs and the LED ring and you have fantastic control, bunch of different LED modes. You can set it to whatever color, couple different presets. It's awesome. Mounting mechanism. The mic has an all metal fork with tightening knobs on either side. Loosening these knobs on the fork allows you to 
change the pitch of the microphone. I fiddle with this way too much. <laughs> Moving down the mic a little bit, we have a plastic clip that is meant for cable management. And right below that, we have one of my favorite features of the mic. I love, wait, we're just we're spitting facts right now, not opinions. We'll get to that later. <laughs> the ring on the bottom of the mic, you use to actually screw to the mic stand so that you don't have to spin your mic around like a doofus. Once you get your mic secured, you can loosen and tighten the ring above that to change the angle at which you want the microphone to face. It is such a beautiful, small detail. I love it. So speaking of details, let's look at the butthole of the mic. On the inside of this mount point, you will find both of the quarter inch and the five eighth inch threadings for any mic boom arm that you might have. Last but certainly not least, actually probably most importantly, is the onboard DSP this microphone has. DSP is short for digital signal processing. This is a device's ability to digitally process audio signals, very similar to what a DAW would do. And a DAW is a digital audio workstation. If you have a GoXLR, you've probably heard the term DSP before processes all of the audio signal on board, which gives you a lot of control and allows you to do some other cool things too. Listen to what this mic has. The list is so long, I can't just speak it off the top of my head. EQ, high frequency and low frequency enhancers, a de-esser, real-time noise suppressor, expander, compressor, and a headphone amp EQ. <laughs> yes, all of these are native to the microphone and adjustable in software. Speaking of software... Please note that all of my testing is done in beta versions of the software. I am also not an audio god. I am not an EQ master. I still have a lot to learn when it comes to EQing microphones. So if what you're hearing right now isn't pleasant and isn't the sound that you're looking for, please be sure to listen to people like Epos Fox, Kick Tripods are gonna have videos that come out, Alpha Gaming, you know Podcast is just gonna be reviewing this mic. So before you make a judgment call, please go out and watch creators that are more experienced than I am and then make your call. So now we're gonna start taking a look at the software. What up, everybody? It's your boy, Poop Daddy, a.k.a. Knackers from the future, because I had to re-record this part of the tutorial. Look, I'm editing it right now, and I fucked it up. Let's get into the software. Don't make fun of my lighting. Here, I'll make it moody. Aw, ugh. There we go. So I'm gonna kind of be going all around here. So I'll, I'll navigate you as best as I can. In the top left, as always with our Beacon products, we have our profile selector. Immediately to the right of that, this is where our devices lie. So I have my Beacon Mix Create, which is here, and then my Beacon Mic, which is here. If I were to click this, it would expand. And if I click the Beacon Mic, it would also collapse. Everything to the right of this device selector is all microphone based. In the bottom left-hand corner, you have your preamp gain. This goes all the way up to 20 decibels. And to the right, you have something that I necessarily hadn't seen before. It's a decibel meter for your mic chain. However, it kind of shows you where your mic is at over a certain length of time. Let's see how many seconds it is. One, two, six, like seven, six, seven seconds. So instead of just having to rely off of a single meter that just has a bouncing signal, as you're talking, you can really see where your microphone level is staying, which I thought was really cool for when you're trying to measure and tweak and fine tune your dynamic range. In the bottom right hand corner, you'll notice this little record and play feature. This is super cool. What you can do when you're tweaking your microphone and really trying to dial it in is you can record a 10 second snippet and then immediately play it back to yourself and listen for tweaks that you'll wanna make after is you can record a 10 second snippet and then immediately play it back to yourself and listen for tweaks that I thought that was a super cool feature. Something I didn't know that I needed that I now need. We have our output gain here as well, which you see, I don't really modify it all and I'll show you why in a little bit. And then right above that, you have your total mic output with your loudness guide that you can turn on and off. Let's go all the way to the top left. We have our EQ and as you can see right now, I have a six band EQ. Uh, as far as I know, this goes up to an eight band EQ. So if I wanted to add two more bands. I could just click this add button, add another one. Let's see if I can add another yoink. I can't, okay, so the, the eight is the max. So this is not an EQ tutorial. I just wanna show you a couple of the the features. When you click on a band to edit, you can either grab it by its frequency, its gain, or its Q value, or you can actually just grab the band itself and move it around wherever you want. Sorry if that was a little jarring. <laughs> Another cool thing Beacon did, if you click and hold a band, you can actually scroll your reel to adjust the Q value on the fly. I like that. Moving from left to right, you have the add band and the remove band. Below that, you have your presets. Now, I'm pretty sure in the future, you're going to be able to have multiple presets that you can jump to and from. Right now, you just have the two that they have provided, but I'm pretty sure that's coming in a build very soon. 
Right now I have my advanced EQ turned on so I can make my adjustments. Of course, if I was to turn my advanced EQ off, it would go right back to being flat, which allows you only to adjust these three bands. They also have a switch to turn on and off a guide. So if you're somebody who is new to EQing and you're not quite sure what you're doing or what each frequency means and how it translates to your mic signal on the other end, they have a beautiful guide here that shows you in general what frequencies control what parts of your voice. As somebody new to EQing, this was awesome to see. To the right of that, you have all of the different bands that you can apply, including micro adjustments to frequency, gain, and Q value. If you are somebody who doesn't know or doesn't want to do your DSing in the EQ as far as like canceling out those frequencies, they do have a very simple dial that you can just rotate until uh, it, it pleases your ears. A de-esser is something that takes the harshness away of the s -s 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 sound. For everybody, that value is going to be different. So don't see somebody's de-esser value and goes, yes, that's what I need to do. You kind of need to do some testing for yourself. To the right of that, we have our low frequency enhancer. They have four different preset profiles. And again, you're gonna have to listen to these to figure out which one you like the most, depending on the, the type of voice that you have. I really like number two, and I keep my amount at about four. I think it you know, it gives me a little bit of boost in the low end without making it too muddy. And I think it's complimentary to my voice. To the right of that, we have our high frequency enhancer, which they call the exciter. Now, as opposed to the bass enhance, where you just have the profile set and the amount, for the exciter, you have the amount and the frequency. So you can really pick the frequency at which you want to enhance, and then you increase the amount based on your preference. So all of that was only the first tab, the mic setup tab, where you're doing your preamp and output gain adjustments. However, they have a couple other features baked into this microphone that really make it set it apart from other mics. So first and foremost, you have their noise suppression. Now there are two different modes that you can use, your adaptive and snapshot. Adaptive is something that is always listening to your room noise in your background and making micro adjustments as your environment may change. So if you have a, a fan or an air conditioner conditioner or a refrigerator that turns on the middle of, of content, you know, adaptive will adapt to those sounds and make the changes accordingly. Now, if you do snapshot, if I was just to hit take snapshot button and then let it go quiet, it would take as long as it needed to, to adjust to your room noise and it would stay there and it would not change. So if you have a very well sound treated environment where you don't have a lot of those issues going off in the background, that would be the way to go. I did ask Beacon what the staff preferred as far as these two modes. And he said pretty much everyone has been using adaptive because of how well it performs. And I accidentally left mine on snapshot from the last time I recorded this video. <laughs> Next up, we have the expander. This might be a little bit different. You might have been expecting a noise gate. So noise gate and expander work a little bit differently and I'll try Try and keep this as brief and accurate as possible. With a noise gate, you set a threshold. And as soon as your voice or the sound falls below that threshold, it's a hard, I'm so sorry, it's a hard cutoff. So as soon as that gate closes, no audio is being let in at all. With an expander, when you set a threshold, when the volume goes below that threshold, it compresses all of the audio below. So instead of it just being like a hard cutoff, it's more of a smooth transition into a closed gate. If you use the advanced mode, not only do you have control over the threshold of the expander, you also have control over how powerful it compresses once your audio falls below that threshold, and then how fast it compresses, and then how fast it releases. Everybody's favorite tab, the compressor, at least it's my favorite tab. So just like with the noise suppression, you have both a simple and advanced. Uh, with simple, you just have control over the threshold and the compress amount. However, if you switch over to advanced, just like you would with most compressors, you have a threshold, a ratio, an attack, and a release. What I really like about the UI here is that they have an attenuation tab. So it shows you exactly in decibels how many you are being compressed. That's a really great visual aid, both for beginners and for advanced users. I'm a huge fan of that. Now, before you heard me mention that I don't have anything in my output gain, that's because I do all of my makeup gain in the compressor. It's just preference for how I've done it in the past. I asked the Beacon team, does it matter if I do my makeup gain in the compressor or in the output gain? And they said, no, they're interchangeable, so do whatever you feel like. And the final tab is headphones. If you want the full experience with the microphone, you should use the headphone amp that's at the back of the microphone, and they give you 
you quite a bit of control. As far as controlling your levels, you can adjust your mic monitor and the rest of your sounds independently, or if you have this link selected, you can adjust both of those together. Now, in this current version of the software that I'm using, the link is broken, so they're not traveling together like they should. That'll be fixed in another build, but if you don't want to adjust them at the same time, you can unclick the link and adjust them accordingly. To the right, you have a three, sort of kind of four band EQ for your headphone amp. This is something that you can turn on and off. So you can adjust the bass, the mids, and the treble. And they also have a subwoofer slider, which if you're somebody who uses in-ear monitors or just general like in-ear buds, um, adding a little bit in the subwoofer gives you a little bit more bass in your headphones, which is awesome because a lot of IEMs, you know, tend to be very flat out of the gate. Last but not least, you can adjust the power on the headphone amp. They have three modes, line level, normal power, and high impedance mode. I was really strapped for time and I didn't have to update to the most, most recent one, which I believe they added an IEM mode as well. I was having an issue where my IEMs were generating a lot of noise, a hissing, a little bit of whining. I believe that they have added a, a new IEM mode. Okay, I just looked in the Discord. Can't confirm there is an IEM mode. As far as the headphones that they can support, I think officially it supports up to 150 ohms. If I'm wrong, I'll put it up on the screen. It might be 300. And that is your quick walkthrough of the software. So up until now, you have been hearing the processed version of my microphone. I have my EQ set, I have my tweaks in the software. However, now, Hello, this is Future Knackers because I forgot to record the voice passages. <laughs> so what you're hearing right now is unprocessed vocals, no EQ, no noise suppression, no expander, no compressor. Uh, my mic gain is currently set at 10 decibels in the Beacon software. My furnace is on. I have two PCs that are pretty close. So it probably doesn't sound that good. I'm going to read this little passage. At first, I'll have everything unprocessed, and then halfway through, I will turn on the processing. Good morning. In less than an hour, aircraft from here will join others around the world and you will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. Mankind, that word should have new meaning for all of us today. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We will be united, we will be united in our common interests. Perhaps it's fate today that it is the 4th of July, and you've once again be fighting for our freedom, not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We are fighting for our right to live, to exist, and should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We are going to live on. We are going to survive. Today we celebrate our Independence Day. One thing you'll notice, this mic does not have a shock mount. It has a metal fork, which is connected to a metal mic. So I'm gonna do some mild stomping on my desk right now with my fists, and then I'll stop talking. Here's what it sounds like with a little bit of handling noise. Did you like that? This is me grabbing my Elgato Arm LP. And now it's time for the box test. This is an audio isolation box that I built before the winter. It's lined with three inches of foam on the inside. I set it on a thick blanket to prevent rumble, and then I'll throw a moving blanket over the top. After recording all of these, I normalized the audio to negative 16 LUFS. Here are the RMS numbers for three decibels of gain on the preamp at seven decibels of gain on the preamp. And then because my testing got fudged for the 12, I'll show you what it looks like with the preamp maxed out. And now for one of the most important tests. Where are you? And I'm so sorry. I cannot sleep. I cannot dream tonight. Don't waste your time on me. Okay, let's reset. First things, what do I like about the mic? The look of it. Obviously a very familiar look, very industrial, but they put so much time and effort into the details. I absolutely love the way that it looks. Of course, the RGB ring hits me right in my good feels heart. I love things that glow. The matte white finish, the all metal, the logo. You can't see it because of my key light right now, but they have a very, very faint logo right here that looks fantastic. I, I lied, mine's on the other side. I think I mounted my mic upside down. <laughs> I was testing this mic with a shock mount and I think I put it on upside down because the logo's now on the underside. That's why my logo was upside down in my B-roll. Guys, I'm a professional. <laughs> the mounting mechanism, having both the quarter inch and the five eighth inch on the 
butthole of the mic, the dual tension rings on the bottom, one for actually securing to the mic arm, and then the other one for pivoting the mic. I love that. The 32-bit float, such a wonderful thing to have. I'm not the person to give you the super technical explanation of 32-bit float, but how I understand it is that having all of those extra bits just gives you, it just gives you so much more room for audio data and makes it nearly impossible Huh? makes it nearly impossible, if not impossible, to peak the microphone. I didn't even know what 32-bit float was until I got my hands on this mic. So let's read something real quick. 32-bit floating is a 24-bit recording with eight extra bits for volume. Basically, if the audio is rendered within the computer, then 32-bit floating gives you more headroom, basically just giving you a much broader dynamic range. The onboard DSP. The, the EQ, the compressor, the noise suppression, the expander, and everything else. As far as USB mics were concerned, it wasn't until Elgato's most very recent release of VST support with their mics that you could really have this sort of control over your mic signal and broadcast it on a system level, right? We're so used to maintaining VSTs within OBS. And for those of us that are a little bit more technically inclined within our DAWs, a lot of times with USB mics, you plug it in and then you kind of hope and pray. And now you plug it in and you just have ultimate control over everything. Obviously, with any other USB mic, you plug it in, you add your VST filters in OBS, and then you're good. What happens to your mic signal in Discord? What happens if you want to record in Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve or in Adobe Audition? You're then managing your mic in all of these different softwares. Now, with you making all of these changes to your mic signal on the microphone's DSP, your modified mic chain goes out to all of the software on the PC. So you know that the signal that OBS is getting everybody is getting. But if you wanted to do that, then you had to install an app that rhymes with Schmoish Schmieder. <laughs> and ugh. And then if you wanted to send this microphone to another PC in a dual PC setup, there's hardware out there that can help you with that. I'm a huge fan of the in-software guidance when it comes to EQ, mic levels, output gain, knowing what are the sweet spots and knowing what EQ bands to adjust as a newbie. This has been super helpful. Next, it sounds great. There's been a stigma around USB microphones that they just aren't as good. You'll hear this from anybody. If USB mics were so good, why don't we use them in my professional studio that I'm an intern at? It is a never ending argument that you can't win with those people. However, answer me this. How many albums have been written recorded and mastered in a bedroom, in a home office, using Focusrite solos and Blue Yetis. Spoiler alert, a lot, a lot of musicians do everything in-house in their home. It's not always about what is the best of the best. It's about what gets the job done. And while I'm not an audio professional to where I can tell you this microphone is better than the Shure SM7B or better than the RE20 or better than a Newman, what I can say is it sounds pretty damn good. And if it doesn't sound that good out of the box, Beacon gives you the tools to make changes to the EQ and the compression and noise suppression to get it to sound kind of how you want it to sound. Of course, if you're aiming for a broadcast dynamic microphone kind of sound. Also, the headphone amp being great. I've used both my IEMs and my Biodynamic DT990s. My IEMs are the Linsoul Z, ZS10 Pros. As far as what I don't like, um, these knobs right here and the knobs down below, they're kind of coarse. They're not really smooth. And again, that could just be a quality issue with my particular microphone, but I would have liked them to be a little bit smoother. That's nitpicking. Again, my IEMs having the EMI issue, you know, it's a very, very faint hiss and a little bit of a high pitch whine did not happen with my DT990s though. This cable management clip is kind of pointless to me. I would have found this clip a little bit more useful if the mic shipped with some right angle USB-C or 3.5 millimeter cables. I just feel like if, if you're gonna try and take these cables and actually get them into that clip, you're gonna be putting a lot of unnecessary strain on the cables where the ports are. And then I feel like with using those cables, you then don't have the freeness to adjust the microphone how you want. So I don't know, I'm just probably gonna take mine off. Lastly, the software needs polish, obviously. Look, this is a brand new company with a new team and this is their first product. I don't expect the software to be out of the gate amazing. But the improvements that they've made since I've started beta testing have been really, really good. As always, never buy hardware with the promise that software is coming or that software is gonna get better, right? But that isn't the case here. The software is already fit for production. There isn't any point that I'm missing functionality or that I'm unable to do what I need to do. Just needs a little bit of spit shine, that's all. So in conclusion, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that this is the best microphone in the world. 
right? I don't have the accolades to do that. Also, what is best mic? What does that even mean? It's totally subjective. But what I can say is that this product does so many little things right, and it adds up. It adds up to a lot. It checks so many different boxes, and using this microphone in conjunction with the Beacon Mix and the Beacon Mix Create in my dual PC setup, I've been able to remove all analog audio equipment. My two mixers, my Roland VT3, my dbx 2 6s my Cloud Lifter, all of my USB interfaces. My dual PC audio setup is this mic and the Beacon Mix Create. That's it. Well, and some cables going back and forth. The Beacon team went out there, found a void, and they filled it. This is a USB mic that is unlike any other USB mic. The most powerful tools are created and developed by them and are implemented natively. It looks great. It sounds great. It feels great. There is attention to detail. There is care for the little things. And there is such a strong emphasis on making the software intuitive and impactful creators to where the, the barrier to entry is pretty low to be able to get in here and start learning. They take those native tools and they build them so that you don't need to go searching for any other third-party tools to get what you need to done. Beacon set out to make a great product for the consumer, especially creators. And to me, they hit the mark. And this is really only the beginning. This is the beginning of their product line and their ecosystem. And if there's one thing that I love about tech, it's ecosystems. All right, everybody, that is my review for the Beacon Mic. I'm also gonna be doing a video review of the Beacon Mix and the Beacon Create. So if you would like to see those videos, check those out on my channel. I can't tell you how much it means to me for you to be watching this video and, and to have these Beacon products in my hand. It was such a privilege to be able to work with them over the past couple of months with beta testing. It was just a surreal experience. And to be able to turn that into content and give it to y'all, it was a dream. So thank you to Beacon. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you soon.